Living Local Carolina with Katie Turner. Local trends, shopping, dining, and more. This is Living Local Carolina. This story is sponsored by Belfour. Well, welcome back to Living Local Carolina. Today, I am at Belfour Property Restoration. I'm joined by Steve. How are you, Steve? I'm doing great, thank you. Wonderful. Tell me your story. How did you get involved with this company? So, I grew up here in Myrtle Beach. I've been here since 74, and Tony moved across the street from me. And it was kind of golf course conversation that started the conversations about me buying in the full steam ahead. Mm. That was back in 2001. And look at you now. We have come a long way. We actually started out with eight employees. It was me and Tony and eight employees. And I actually was hired to do sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. But the company grew so fast that I got into the production side and I've been doing production, all of it ever since. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. So for somebody that might not know, what does Belfort do? So we specialize in insurance restoration. So if somebody's house gets damaged either by water or fire, we do mold remediation, we do a little biohazard cleanup. Um, anything that normally when the insurance company gets involved, we can get involved and help you guys out with it. So how far is your reach in terms of who, who you're able to help? So we concentrate in Ori, Georgetown, and Brunswick County. But now that we're Belfort, our reach is a little bit farther. So we go up into the Wilmington area, we go up to Florence, we are basically east of 95, and then Columbia takes care of west of 95. And we go down to McClellanville, because Charleston comes up to McClellanville. Gotcha. And you mentioned it a little bit before, full steam ahead is what you guys used to be, Correct. and now you're Belfort. Tell me all about that. So in 2020, we were acquired by Belfort and uh, we've maintained the same employees that we've had. We Probably 70% of them are still here. You, you normally lose people, just normal attrition. So, and we use the same subcontractors we used before. Yeah, you like to support small businesses, right? We're supporting the same local small businesses that we did when we were full steam ahead. Very cool. Now, talk about the process when somebody gives you guys a call, you're able to come out, see what the damage is, and then come back here, and they're able to actually design the whole nine yards. If, if you have a loss at your house in the middle of the night, you can call us and we will come out and respond. Say you get out of bed and you step into water, you can step into two inches of water if a supply line breaks, and we'll come out and take care of that. And then your next step normally is to contact your insurance company. So once you reach out to your insurance company, we'll meet with the insurance adjuster and make sure they see the same damage as we do so everybody's on the same page. And then we can actually, uh, once we determine what is damaged after we dry the house out, you can come here to make selections. We have a beautiful showroom. You can do your floor coverings, your cabinets, paint colors, countertops here. And then if you don't like something we have here, we'll take you wherever you wanna to go to do some shopping. Awesome, love that. Yeah. What would you say is the most rewarding part of this job? So for me, what keeps me around is when someone first has a loss and they don't know which way to go, it's the process of helping them through that process. Mm -hmm. So I like to show up at the house and they're kind of freaking out a little bit, which is yeah. what you do when you step out of water, oh, into water. Yeah. And then we actually can help guide you through that process. And that's working with the people is my favorite part of the job. And I can imagine you've made some friends over the years and have lots of stories. I'll tell you, we have made friends. Uh, not only do they become customers, but a lot of them become friends also. And okay. we still do social things with a lot of those people that we've worked for. Yeah, how did, how did you get involved with Belfort in the first place? So, uh, probably 15 years ago, there was a loss in North Myrtle Beach, and uh, we were working on the loss, and we get a phone call that somebody from Belfour Property Restoration was gonna come down, and they might take the job from us. It was a $30,000 job, so it was a rather large job. And uh, the gentleman came in town, and uh, I met him, and we hit it off, and he let us do the repairs, so they didn't bring Belfour in from Charleston. And since then, We've done four jobs for him personally. His, his mom and dad own the condo. That same condo is flooded three times. He had a condo in Tidewater that somebody drove a car into, and we did the work for him there. And then they actually used to have some jobs here in Myrtle Beach, and they would call us and ask us if we would help the customers out. So we built a great relationship with, with Belfour. This story is sponsored by Belfour.
We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Well, we have got our apron on today because we are at the Art Museum of Myrtle Beach. I'm joined by Colin. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Let's go ahead and get into it. What All are right. we doing today? So today we have these stuffed paper sculptures of musical instruments. It's inspired by our exhibit, Lifting Black Voices. We have one of the galleries in the show has an um, entire uh, gallery full of um, paintings and artwork that is inspired by jazz and music. Mm -hmm. So. This is a pretty simple project, but still it gives you really cool results. So the first step for this is you're going to print out either some type of musical instrument, it could be whatever you'd like. We have some tubas here. And after you print them out, you're going to cut them out. And then you're going to get another sheet of paper and you're going to trace the outline of the instrument. Okay. So you just go around. And this, it doesn't have to be nice and neat, you can do it. A little quick, you can do a little sketchy, which I like to do. I'm very focused right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's, glad you said it didn't have to be perfect. Yeah, sketching it, it takes a lot of focus, more focus than you think. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, yeah, once you have that all sketched out, you'll end up cutting it out. Okay. But thankfully, we already have these two examples already cut out. Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, so. I can skip that step. Yay! <laughs> okay. So, yeah, uh, once you cut them out, you will have, of course, two pieces of paper. And what you want to do is first staple half the papers together. So, I did it kind of a little strategic spot so we can still kind of have some areas where we can uh, end up stuffing the paper in there. Uh, but so gotcha. I did some like at the top and I just did some of the sides too, leaving openings that up here and also here at the bottom as well. But after you get it stapled together, you get to decorate it. And okay. Of course, this is completely up to the artist how you would want to decorate it using whatever colors, whatever types of patterns. It's completely right. up to you. Let's do it. Well, I'm back today at the Myrtle Beach Colored School Museum and Education Center, and I'm joined by Cookie. How are you, Cookie? I am well. How are you, Katie? I'm doing great. Yes. But tell me, where are we standing right now? So right now, we are standing in the um, Museum of African American History at the historic Myrtle Beach Colored School Museum and Education Center. Yes. So there's really several spaces, but um, the one is dedicated to the former students um, of the color school. And then this is African American history where Doc Shee Moore serves as the uh, curator. And it's, it talks about or shares um, our life, the life of African American um, people in Africa prior to enslavement. And as, as dark, you know, as it was, it's mm -hmm. part of history. So we uh, share a little bit about uh, slavery itself. And then some of the significant People, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, you know, all of those up into current day uh, with President um, Obama, Vice President Kamala Harris. So talking a little bit about if people want to donate and help you guys out, how can they do that? Yes. So um, we're continuously looking for um, artifacts as they relate to history. Mm -hmm. And so um, donations can be made simply by calling us. Um, 843-918-1062 or showing up here um, at the museum and, and bringing those artifacts. Now I will say that in order for something to be uh, deemed museum um, quality or museum eligible, there was um, a curator, you know, for the classroom part, that a professional person, mm -hmm. because, you know, some people brought their grandfather's shoes or their grandfather's hat. And while that is so important and so special, we did not have the space for it. Mm -hmm. So um, we just want people to, to um, come by and if they think they have something, but also for locals who have Mm -hmm. pictures um, from back in the day that you know they wish to share 
um, we're um, creating some things um, at Charlie's Place, which is one of the facilities um, that we manage and it's also mentioned here um, in the Museum of African American Histories. We'll be back right after this break with more Living Local Carolina. Welcome back to Living Local Carolina. I'm Katie Turner, and boy, do we have something going on in the studio today. I'm joined by Wade Johnson, the director of bands at Benedict College. How are you? I am fabulous, Ms. Turner. Thank you for having me. Now, yes. okay, we need to talk about a very specific way that you can perform that not everybody can do. You can actually play two instruments at the same time. Oh, yes. Frank Motley from Busy Gillespie's band. Um, the precursor was this, Joey Morant, the late Joey Morant from Charleston, South Carolina. He had a trumpet that had two bells on it, uh -huh. but one lead pipe. And when I saw him as a kid doing that, I was like, oh my God. I didn't know that was just one horn. Uh -huh. So moving forward, to um, late, late 70s, early 80s, I got to meet Mr. Gillespie and saw his big band. Frank Motley was one of his trumpet players on his big band. Frank Motley actually did it with two trumpets. Uh -huh. And I lost my mind. Uh -huh. I walked up to him, Mr. Motley, oh, oh that, was, that was awesome. That was he said, son, you want to learn how to do this? And I, I, I almost had a heart attack, at first, but still, with Mr. Motley, I said, yes, sir. You know, in a small town, country boy, I said, that would be something great to learn how to do. So he sat me down. He told me the logistics behind it. And, and scientifically, guys, the only way to do this, there are about three of us in the country, in the world, that can do it. But you have to use both sides of your brain simultaneously. <laughs> because, you know, we have like cognitive skills, uh, mm -hmm. one skill, right side, left side. We only do it once, once in a but it took me seven years, seven years to master it to the point where people could understand what I was playing. Mm -hmm. And that I remember the first gig that I did in 1981. I'll never forget it. I was at a VFW in 1981 and, and I decided to try it. And the, the place was packed. And I mean, when I did it, the, everybody stopped and they were shocked at first and I did it, and after I put my horns down, the place erupted. Oh, I, I believe so it. So that pinpointed up a part in my life. Everybody say, do you know H. Wade Johnson? Hey, that's the guy that played the two horns at the same time. So that, that developed through that. And when I tell you, Ms. Turner, the rest is history. Mm -hmm. It's history. And it's, it's a calling card for me now. Yeah. And if I perform, when I perform at different places and the people who know me, if I don't do it, then they get fussed at. Oh. Yeah, so they go like, you will not end your show until you do a double horn solo. <laughs> I love it. But I, I, I love it too, and, and just putting it together was very, very difficult. But I love the fact that it's a gift. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God, it's a gift. And I do it uh, secondhand. Easy. It's easy for me now. That's so cool. Yes, yes. And I understand your he was. Turner, he was. He yeah. was a trumpet player. In Columbia, yes. He was yeah. From the yeah, because I know some of the people that he know and uh, some of the school mm -hmm. that he worked. Um, I played the flute. Yes. Awesome. See, so you brought your flute? I did not bring my flute. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Next time. I Next didn't want to get show it up now. We'll do, we'll do a trio. How mm -hmm. about instead of a duet? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Next course. time. Bye. <laughs> 
Yes, yes. Don't forget to like our page on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. How to use the QR code. Just open the camera app on your smartphone, iPad, or tablet. Point your device at the QR code so the QR code appears on your screen. Your device will recognize the QR code and show you a notification. Click that notification and you'll come to our website. Living Local Carolina, weekday mornings at 9.30 on WBTW News 13.